Ladies and jellyfish, welcome back to Ask Air. We've talked about every aspect of the Ben 10 alien roster on this channel, from ranking each alien show by show, to the giant ranking of the entire alien playlist. I've made no shortage of videos talking about the Ben 10 aliens, but that's just the official aliens. What if I told you there were aliens, confirmed by the Ben 10 crew, who've never been accepted into any of the shows, and thus are lost to the wikis of the internet forever? Some aliens should have never made the enemy choice. No! Why don't we go through the list of each one of them today and talk about how each one would fit in the show and their overall power abilities. And you're going to want to watch till the end of this video because on top of all that, we're going to give each of them a nice redesign using my friend White Snake Shinobi's amazing artistic ability to make the aliens come to life even more. His socials will be linked below for you to go and tell him he's a legend and send him kisses on my behalf. Before we start, be sure to subscribe for countless other Ben 10 videos. Let's just jump right into this. <laughs> First off, we got Rocks. Simple enough name, but I would have gone with a double word combination myself. Something like Asphalt Ass Kicker. Oh wait, this was a kid's joke, never mind. My first impression of this alien is like The Thing from the Fantastic Four, which along with the Easter Island Rocks from Trade Off, Snake and I tried to incorporate into this redesign. Rocks has the ability to generate earthquakes, since he's, you know, a rock. Kinda like how Heat Blast can make Supernova since he's made out of fire. I could see Rocks being another Andromeda alien, kinda like a foil to Armadrillo. If they were fought inside the Omnitrix, I'd love to see that. Rocks can also resist extreme heat, and oh yeah, he's also really strong. I feel like a natural weakness of rocks would be water. Not only would he sink and drown due to his massive weight, but water could also erode his body and make him crumble over time. Overall, although he may appear to have a tough exterior and is quick tempered in battle, rocks, spelled a little differently in our version, is still very down to earth. Next up is Squid Stricter, who is definitely not Squidward mixed with the worst. Squid Stricter has tentacles, can shoot ink out of them, can camouflage in different environments, and can maneuver in small tight places. He has underwater survivability and mana detection, meaning he can touch a living thing with his tentacles and detect their mana, kind of like one can. I think his alien could have a lot of potential and kind of ride off the coattails of Ripjaws and Amphibian in a way. With his new design, his tentacles are tied up into limbs that he would unravel underwater or in combat like a little Ripjaws with his tail. He could even evolve to have mind control powers to go along with the mana thing, just like Amphibian. The bracers on his arms and his shorts hold his tentacles together. The teeth are based on a whale's baleen teeth. Guy, Snake's a genius, isn't he? Obvious weakness of this one is that he can't survive long without water, like our other favorite undersea alien. And his arms may even get tangled in tough scenarios. Enemies could even throw him around with those. I also just thought about this, but what if when he gets sick, the ink we can shoot gets into his eyes and he can't see properly, like Wild Mutt. That'd be sick, eh? Portaler originated in an old online game and it was given a design by Derek J. White in 2020. He has the power to create portals and go anywhere and can teleport anyone. Similar to Cannonbolt, he can also roll into a ball with green and red spikes showing. I think a portal alien was severely lacking in Ben 10, but this roly poly Cannonbolt ripoff shouldn't be the way to go. Maybe a floating low star looking dude with a Gravitac type pole in the stomach would have fit the idea better. That's just my opinion. For the redesign, we didn't want to lean heavily into the 5YL update version, so Snake just kept the OG smaller shell and gave him a nice slick color palette that looks much more appealing. Imagine this alien could have teleported every bad guy to the Null Void, or if you could have teleported the Nihilarch to another universe before it detonated. Portaler has the same potential as a sick alien. Let's just change the name to Plata Portal and call it a day. Bob the Blob should have a better name, really. I'd go with something simple and quick. Maybe Goop. But hey, just spitballing here. Bob the Blob is listed to only have the ability of sticky skin. Hurry! Hang on! He's coming! I'm almost there! As an alien expert, let me just throw out five new powers this alien could have instantly. The power to be split into two different entities and fight, before merging back together to be more powerful. The power to shoot acids, slimes, and gooey substances to subdue enemies. The power to crawl through tight spaces including doors and cracks. The power to communicate with all alien species, no matter the race or planet. The power to morph his body into any shape including new arms, legs, and all sorts of geometric shapes. He could even have two distinct personalities with his two halves, which is something Snake and me worked on emphasizing with the Yin and Yang inspired design on this one. Let's just change the name to Blob, to resemble Ditto, Upgrade, and Goop more closely closely with the one word name. Boom. Legendary alien. Anti-Gravitesla is an alien unknown by many, but one whose powers could have had great potential if given actual screen time in the show. Let's give Anti-Gravitesla a try. Uh -huh. oh. Some aliens should have never made the Omnitrix. First off, we need a new redesign. Get the Steve Harvey looking ass out of here. Do your magic snake. Let's lose the facial hair and replace it with some of those electric rods and facial tentacles. If it didn't work for forearms, it won't work for gravity. anti gravity Tesla's power roster is similar to Gravitax later on, as he has the ability to affect gravity around him, on objects he holds. This means he could perform telekinesis and fly with little to no effort. This new design also gives him ultimate echo echo like this on his body that can help him fly. In addition to these, I would have also added the ability to shoot cosmic rays that make gravity heavier on his enemies, making them collapse to the floor and not be able to jump, or make them so 
light that they fly away into the atmosphere. Imagine a fight with Vilyax or Egregore, where the enemy's legs are literally crushed by the effects of the heavy gravity on them. That would be sick. He just needs a better name now. Uh, something like, oh, I don't know, Grav Attack? Now that's a good one. Ultimately, we decided on Grav a Connector. Ventrula Squid seems like he could have actually had a place in the canon roster. This alien has ventriloquist powers, meaning that he can make his voice appear to come from somewhere else. This typically occurs while a person or dummy moves their lips and imitates another being's voice. His power also works on inanimate objects. Ventrula Squid also possesses telepathy, just enough to implant thoughts and words into another's brain. Not sure how these powers could come in handy during a fight, but maybe he could just play with the enemy's mind a little bit and distract them long enough for someone else to deliver a finishing blow. I do like the design Derek J. Wyatt did, but we just have to add our own finishing touches on it all. Snake added a lot of his own references and touches to it, so here's the full explanation if you're curious. I think it's a 10x improvement on the original for sure. Planet Apocalypse is one of the most interesting non-canon Benton aliens, because while he looks like just another wild vine ripoff, his powers are pretty badass. He can devour entire cities, and his growth is based purely on ingesting solid matter. You know, sometimes I really get tired of saving the world. He has long elastic tentacles that stretch from city to city, as he can basically eat entire buildings to get stronger. For the redesign, we added the flower to the chest to reference his original design. The idea is that the flower grows on bloom, the vines extend from it, and it can consume solid matter to grow larger. When it grows large enough for its surface area to capture enough sunlight, the flower blooms and it can fire a giant solar laser. If I was in charge of the Ben 10 crew, I would have definitely given this alien a mountain-like presence rather than a giant plant. He could still be green, but sort of like that big alien from the Widening Guy or in UA, mixed with the hybrid tree monster from Fallout's Fails. He could be like a giant way big sized city that Ben's allies could navigate through as they could devour entire planets on enemy territory. But he'd also need some sort of weakness to go along with that or else he'd be OP. Let me know in the comments what you'd do for that. Also let me know which of these colors look best in your eyes. I would have loved to see this alien, Invincible, in the real show. Created by a legend, Matthias Vadnai, the winner of the Ben 10 Alien for a Strong Competition from Hungary, Invincible can transform into different objects, such as a shield or a cannon. He can attack by turning his body into a cannon and shooting laser beams, bullets, or flaming fireballs. Invincible is also immune to lasers. Well, that's a damn potential with this alien. I see this alien being sort of like a more OP upgrade, who can turn himself into different machines to be Kevin or Rook's laser beam in a fight. He could even become an alien extra atomic type alien, where they make him much more powerful and allow him to truly be invincible and annihilate entire cities with his laser abilities and increased durability. For the redesign, Stink worked on adding the vector design in the style of old video game polygons. Inspirations from the Spot from Spider-Verse and the Constellation Monsters from Sinbad. Definitely the most experimental design so far, so let us know how it came out. <laughs> Next up, Shadow Man was created by Viktor Zabinski, the winner of the Ben 10 Alien Force drawing competition of Poland. This one appears to be a mix of Upgrade, Goop, and Chameleon. Shadow Man can blend into darkness and be absolutely invisible in any shadow. For the redesign of this one, it was tough not to make it too similar to Upgrade. What would be useful for someone who uses the shadows? A big projector to cast them. Much like Shikimaru, you can cast shadows with a physical mass that can wrap people up and attack them. The shadows would also have a limit that he can extend with his projector by casting a bigger shadow. This alien could be insanely useful in stealth scenarios, and could even be cooler than Chameleon. He could probably have the weakness of sunlight, kind of like Ghost Freak did. I present to you, not Shadow Man, but Shadow Caster. Last up, we got Strachilio, who was created by Patrick Nandor Zahul, winner of the Alien Force Strong competition from Romania. This alien is basically a Stretch Armstrong type thing that can snake around enemies and constrain them. Snare and Goop type idea, which I find kind of cool. Might have been nice to have this alien when Ben was fighting Albedo to constrain him from transforming, etc. For the redesign, we went for a more Predator vibe, especially with the dreads. Basing the pose off of Mr. Fantastic style, the body was kept simple to bring out the more complex face of this one. His dreads here are prehensile and can stretch like Mr. Fantastic, maybe even weak to the cold. Probably wish we could have seen this one in the real show itself. Point. And that was all the non-canon Ben 10 aliens that we never got explained. This series is not over because not only are there 20 more unreleased aliens, including 10 from Ben 10,000's catalog, there are a bunch of fandom aliens that I'd love to look at and dissect for y'all here. So let me know if you want parts 2, 3, and more. And let me know in the comments which of these 10 aliens you like the most. Do you like the redesigns more than the originals? Do let me know all your thoughts in the comments down below, and your comment may just get pinned. Ginormous thank you to my good buddy White Snake Shinobi for drawing every alien here. Couldn't have done this without him. He also added plenty of commentary that I incorporated here, so please look in the description, follow him on DeviantArt, and all his other socials listed below. Give him some love, and he'll return for following videos. If you want to see all the new art produced in this video as a PNG file to spread it all over the internet, I'll leave a link to a Google Drive link below to all these aliens in full HD. Thank you so much for watching. Be sure to like, subscribe, and follow the socials below to support me, and I'll see you beautiful ladies and jellyfish in the next one.